So my name is Pravi. I'm leading the Lumen Runtime team at Magic Leap. So today we're going to see how to run multiple 3D apps simultaneously. <laughs> Obviously, it's not running. <laughs> All right. So the agenda is we're going to see what Lumen Runtime is, why we did it, and how we did it. Uh, we're going to see a brief introduction to how we develop apps in Lumen Runtime and how we uh, leverage Lumen Runtime for the collaboration aspect. All right, so what is Lumen Runtime? Uh, from a high-level view, it's in the stack. We are like the framework. Uh, we are a runtime. We are a technology. And we are also an engine. Um, so in Magic Leap, we have this concept of immersive apps and landscape apps. So think of immersive as your um, full screen desktop app, right? If you're playing some immersive game or an FPS game, that's what it is. Um, all the device resources are dedicated to an immersive app. And with landscape, you have all these multiple apps uh, running simultaneously. Like in this slide, you can see that we have like a, a screens app running behind, um, a gallery with all these uh, textures and images and all that, um, and 3D models. Then you have another 3D uh, app running on your coffee table. Um, so on a desktop, when you want to have more apps, you just have either extra monitors or extra windows. But in mixed reality, you have an unlimited amount of space around you. So we feel that, hey, you don't want to be stuck to a single immersive app or single immersive experience. You want to have multiple experiences running simultaneously. All right, so what we did is like, hey, let's take two apps, put some uh, protocols around it, right? So say, we say, okay, let's take a calculator app as a simple example. We say, okay, as an app developer, you have this amount of space, volumetric space around you uh, within which your app can live. And uh, then we take two apps, we put them together, we put some protocols around it. And uh, the management of it, as in the placement of it, we use um, a system called Universe. It is the equivalent of a desktop manager, but for mixed reality. All right, so landscape is where you're sharing your uh, virtual space. You're not only sharing the device resources, but the landscape around you. Landscape is the physical space around you. All right, so why Lumen Runtime? So on a desktop, when you run multiple 3D apps, you're pretty much running it in Windows. So the output of those is like 2D surfaces. So mixing those 2D surfaces is technically a little bit more complex, and it's probably not achievable. Um, so that's where Lumen Runtime comes in. It takes multiple 3D apps, it's able to intermix them uh, realistically, and it's spatially accurate. Um, so if you have one app behind, or one app in front, if you have a 3D virtual object in front or behind, it's rendered properly. The sorting is all done properly for you. So how did we do it? All right, so first let's have a look at um, how a 3D uh, app is generally structured. So most apps have a business logic on top. This is where most developers spend their time. Then depending on the engine you have, um, you have a set of APIs which allows the developers to go construct their app. Um, the engine kind of provides the interface for rendering. You don't go into the details of how you render, but you basically say, hey, here's a model, render it here. The output of an engine is the scene graph. This is the most critical part for us in Lumen Runtime. And usually there's a renderer which consumes the scene graph and it outputs like a, um, an image every frame. And if you're on a mixed reality app, then your head pose is used as a perspective, so you get a stereoscopic output. And that's basically consumed by the, de by the device, and that's what you see. So what we did for Lumen Runtime, it said, okay, let's split the business logic, uh, let apps run in this part of the uh, layer. Um, then we said, okay, let the Lumen server kind of take care of the rendering, and let the scene graph be communicated from one app to the server. And when you want to have multiple 3D apps, you basically have the scene graphs going to the renderer. That's how we did it. All right, so basically it's a client server model. We have all these apps running in a sandbox environment. Um, this gives you all the needed security, so we're not really breaking anything. We don't, we're not running everything in a single app. Imagine if you want to run um, your banking app with a browser, you don't want to run in the same process. You want to be running in it in a separate process. And the communication is done through IPC. IPC is like inter-process communication. So on Android, we use binders for it. But there's a lot of optimizations we've done for it. So here's a high-level view. Um, so basically, the scene graph from your client app goes to a single uh, central server 
where all the scene graphs is communicated into one central scene graph, and then we do the rendering here. Um, there's a lot of things that happens here. For example, we want to be rendering asynchronously because we want to keep our latency as low as possible. Um, we bring our latency down to 16 milliseconds for rendering. On top of that, we do techniques like time warping, so we get like eight milliseconds. But we don't want one app to slow down. We, want, we don't want one app to slow down the other one. So there's a lot of thought we put into it. There's a lot of technology that went into achieving this. So let's have a quick look at how we would develop a Lumen runtime app. It is no different from any other app you've been developing so far. You have like an initialization phase, then you have like an event handling phase. Event handling is when you have input events and such, then your app reacts to it. And if you're from the gaming world, then you have like an update loop so you can do things every frame, like you wanna move your characters and such. And once you're done with the app, you basically quit. Right, so there are three essential concepts I would say we need to know. One is nodes, resources, and events. We'll quickly look through it. So let's say I wanna build an app like this, a clock, a simple clock. So what I would do is first build up all my resources. Resources are nothing but your assets, like your model, your wave file, a couple more models for building your clock. Then you have the node, just nothing but a tree structure. So it's a hierarchical structure. What I'm saying is, hey, here's a clock model. I'm having a parent-child relationship where I'm saying, hey, uh, I'm gonna have this uh, a bell attached to the, to the clock and I'm gonna say there's an audio attached to the uh, bell as well. So like that, we build up the scene graph. It's like tree structure. Um, and then the relationship between this nodes and resources is basically, hey, nodes use resources. So we reuse our assets. Um, so events, just like any other app, we got all the basic set of events, like all your input events. But for mixed reality, we do a lot more. We need to have like gesture events. We need to do uh, like, for example, the real world around you is represented as a virtual mesh, so you can do like ray cast and such. So if you wanna place your virtual object on a real world, you need to do like ray cast so you know where to place it. So all of those is taken care for you. So Lumen Runtime gives it to you as like a events for the app developer to handle them. All right, so this slide is a bit overwhelming. Um, as I was putting things together and realized that we're running out of space, but uh, it's basically to show that it's got everything that you need. Um, there's a whole bunch of things, for example, nodes, resources. We support things like GLTF, FBX. We even work with medical teams because they needed support for DICOM viewers. We do volumetric rendering and all that. All right, so now that you've constructed your app, what happens next? So the spatialization of the app, for example, you've created an app, how do we place it on a table? So all of those complexities is taken for you. So Lumen Runtime does the spatialization for you. So if you walk up to the app, it's bigger. When you're closer, when you walk away, it gets smaller. All of those are standard rendering techniques. And audio as well, once you say, I need an audio to be over here, when you walk up to it, it's spatialized. It's, when you're closer, it's louder. When you walk further away, it's smaller, it attunates properly. So all of that is done, from, but from a developer's perspective, you only need to develop within this volume. You basically arrange your app within this volume. All right, so as any engine would provide, you provide, we provide a lot of middleware, a lot of tools. For example, for forms, we have built our own UI kit. You get all the form-related elements. Uh, for particle effects, we integrated a library called Popcorn FX. It comes with its own editing tools. Then we have uh, Animation Studio. Uh, we did quite a bit with physics. Um, for networking, we integrated POCO. And pretty soon, you'll also get WebRTC coming soon. So extending functionality. So you can extend the nodes and resources, you can create your own plugins, you can create your own language bindings like what Magic Script did from Conrad. Um, so he basically took C++, he created a JavaScript layer for it. You can bring in your own frameworks. We basically encourage you to inherit and repurpose. Uh, so now that we have seen like the high level view of how Lumen Runtime architecture is, how did we use it for collaboration? So let's take an example, I have an app, I wanna share it with people over here, but I don't want you to install it, right? If I can just say, hey, cast this app to you, then you see it from your perspective. If I place a clock here, I see the clock face, you may see the back of the clock. All of that is done, ready-made for you, and AppDollar doesn't even need to worry about it. So the way we do it is we basically share the scene graph. Right? Because the, the perspective is done at the last stage, and the perspective is used from your own local device, so you recall the structure, we have the scene graph going to the renderer, and the renderer is using the, your current head pose. 
So what we did instead, hey, let's take the scene graph from the app. We just inverted the logic saying, instead of sending multiple scene graph to a single server, how about we take the scene graph and send it to multiple servers? So that's what we did. And when we want interaction from you guys, so what we do is like, let's send the input back to the originating app. So if the app chose to, it can just treat it as a local input, so it can, you, you won't even know that it's coming from a remote person. But if it chose to, it can say, you know what, if it's a chess app, I want only the local user to move the white pieces and remote users to move the black pieces. All right, here's a futuristic concept. Let's say I walk into a shopping center, and every shop may have its own app running. I don't want to install every app. Right? Okay, I'm walking through, I want apps to come in and go out. But installing every single app for every single store is going to be a little bit of uh, uh, not a great user experience. So what we thought, okay, this is how we're doing interactive casting, but uh, what if we got rid of that layer and pretty much ran everything in the cloud? So in theory, we can pretty much remove local apps, we can run everything in the cloud. So how would you go about developing Lumen runtime apps? The primary app is done in C++, the native Lumen runtime APIs are in C++. The core of it was everything was developed in C++. MagicScript was our first extension. We put JavaScript on it. Uh, if you're more from web, web field, then Helio, web apps, um, brings in Prismatic. And there are others coming soon. So thank you all. My name is Praveen. If you, all the resources are over here for you to look up. Thank you.